They must have the slowest horses ever pulling this bleeding wagon, mustn't they? She ain't gonna go past here like past two. In fact, shortly the horses will bum in her on the way down to the post. Yeah, no, no, I'm just here, look at you. Lining with tasty women here, don't you ugly men? All you ugly men, get out of the way! And a rather huge warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Weekend Podcast, where we're going to go through uh, today's events and give you our best bets for the final day of the Royal Ascot meeting. Hooray! Um, and joining me to do that this this evening is my crack duo uh, of John Lang and Quentin Franks. Good evening, chaps. Evening, Lee. Good evening, yeah. Lee. Yes, yes, it's, it's more club lang pain today uh, for me and John. I think Quentin's fared a bit better. Uh, Quentin liked uh, Candleford and Ajero. Uh, well, I, I, to be fair, that, I, I did bite that, but then anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. Let's come on to, to, to today's act. So, th- so the best thing I saw today um, was, it, was, it, was somebody sent it on my, to me on Twitter. I'd not seen ITV today. And uh, there was this portly gentleman sat in, sat in his chair and he's he's got his, got his shades on, and basically he's watching the world go by, and I I just find it astonishing what the, what what followed. Luke Harvey's going round with his microphone, asking all all the crowd, you know. Then he comes to this gentleman. Um, I mean, it does remind me of me and John. But but this guy was looking like he'd lose it. He was already losing the will to live. He, he was he was he was sat staring with his shades on. You know, he, he was motionless, just as if to say, I've just had enough. John, did what did you did you see this? I did, and then, you know, it's like when you sat there at the end of a rank bad day, <laughs> you, you sort of try to decide what's the best next option: shotgun in the mouth, pills. <laughs> Plastic bag wanking incident. <laughs> and then Lil Gary comes up and shows a microphone in your gob. <laughs> <laughs> how, how low can it get? <laughs> yeah, well, so, so this place, poor bloke. Uh, after Luke, Luke shoves, shoves my, uh, the, Luke Harvey was a picture because because he he shoved microphone expecting to say this is fantastic this is amazing it's fantastic what a, what a place this is love it I, and straight away this bloke expressionless turned around and says no it's rubbish <laughs> <laughs> there's no chairs it, it, it's hot it's too crowded it's absolutely rubbish and then it, so Luke couldn't get out there fast enough because there were no there were no like plaudits saying fantastic, brilliant, lovely, amazing, super. Uh, which I thought was that was best interview of the day. Um, so thanks for that. Um, uh, whoever posted that on Twitter because I, I hadn't seen that. That was, that was that cheered me right up after after backing some losers. I felt like that. Um, and me and John when we go racing usually feel like that as well. So. <laughs> So anyway, um, coming on to the day's action then, and we started the day off um, with the Albany, a, a Group 3 Phillies, Phillies race. Uh, meditate, very, very professional filly. I thought she was on a on her first couple of starts, um, and she pinged the lids, boom, out and away, gone. Good performance. Uh, anything to note in that, chaps, or more views? I think, I think she's quite the finished article. Um I don't think you'd describe her as scopey, would you? Um, no. Pretty set. Mm. Um, the runner-up could do with it being up a bit, I thought. Uh, and the third didn't look a bad stamp of the loss, but I'm, I'm not over keen on Dark Angels, really. But, no. All right. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, you couldn't grab that for the farms. <laughs> Did well to make all, really. Yeah, uh, I thought the the fifth shaped well for me. Sydney Arms Chelsea for Charles Hills. I thought that did a little bit wrong, really. Kind of sort of missed it a little bit. Um, just you know, ran on really nicely late. Thought that ran a, a real nice race in fifth. Quentin, did you see anything in the Albany? Yeah, by the obvious. I thought the third was the obvious pace. Pace seemed to hold up really. Uh, Queen Ollie more near side of the. Uh, more stand side of the pack did probably did well from the position she was in. Uh, not really sure what to make of the winner. Not really sure what to make of the race. Um, it's kind of one where I want to see more runners come out of it before 
kind of putting a firm idea on 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 a rating or something. But like, like John was saying, there ain't much of the winner. The one the one C gear fancied was was a bit of a disappointment. Fully wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The broken fridge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I managed to I managed to get a match bet on this morning with a with a friend of mine. He, he said gonna have a six hundred to five. He wanted uh Queen Ollie to beat fully wet. So that that's how my day started this morning. Pain. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um so n- no one did all right there. Um like you said, uh, meditate a nice fancied runner there for, for punters, I'm sure, somewhere along the line. Three or five race, the Commonwealth Cup. The scaffolder. He was in good <laughs> he was in good form after this one, after he after perfect powers win. Leona was straight there and at the races with the interview. And he's he's uh, and after Leona had congratulated him, he's lunging at her, lunging for a kiss. <laughs> Uh, was the scaffolder? He was lurching forward, could, could, couldn't couldn't get near enough to her uh, before scarpering after he realised he's probably got too close. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, any any thoughts on the Commonwealth Cup? Yeah, the honest legal team might be taking out an injunction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's um, really impressive, isn't it, really? Uh, coming back to six furlongs after the, the the Guineas debacle, shall we call it debacle? No, just just an okay start running the Guineas, wasn't it really? I thought uh, shit. I thought it shaped well in Guineas to be. Yeah, I, th- I thought it had a bit a bit of trouble, but yeah. Yeah, um, man was last. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Twilight Jet. Twilight Jet backers, what do you feel about that? The big drift on the exchanges, as Double usual. Race close to the off. Yes. Somebody knew it was going to run, run like a knackered fridge. For want of a better expression. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I've no. I think that. I think. It's, I think it's solid three-year-old firm going, form going forwards. Uh, I, I, I see nothing to pick holes in. In. in You'd probably rate the winner what it's rated without rating it with flaming ribbon second, floaters third. I'd, I'd say I'd say it's solid three-year-old form at this stage of the season. Um, then we go to Candleford in the three forty, the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, very impressed, Quentin liked this one, um, and Julie did the business uh, very impressively from a. What, what would we say, chaps? A, a bit of an over aggressive ride from Miss Riff's jockey on a, on a Jera. Yeah, most definitely did. I think they were docking 40, 41 after about three furlongs. He had a chance to get a breather in as well. He could have slotted back onto the front of the pack away from the, the tearaway leader. He did. He, he did well to keep keep on for second. To be honest, given the fractions he was clocking, uh, Candleford did well to win. He, he's won by six, but ended up posted a bit deep earlier um, than he would have wanted to be. Ager, I said, was a, a good thing off of eighty nine, and you, he's not going to be double figures next time out. Um, it was which is a shame. Um, that wasn't really too much. It was quite disappointing in Trawlerman. Never seemed to travel at all. Um, but, Winners, winners of group balls and handicap, isn't he? Yeah. Looks good. Looks like he's improved physically a lot to me. Because mm-hmm. after the race, I, I got on last year's uh, race, to, uh, uh, last turf race. I didn't bother looking at the all weather runs. I just looked at the last turf race, and I thought I felt he'd done a lot physically. John, what did you think? He, he looked a vastly improved. He, he really has taken up. Um, mm. Really impressive winner. Very impressive. What do you think? Where, where would you go now with him? What would you What would you do? Would you be thinking Eve or? or? I'd be half inclined to have a doubt at the vote of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, fair shout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, yeah, you'd probably have a look and see what see what's entered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could, could decide. Yeah, it could decide. You sort of like. Yeah, pass pass really for the rest of the season. Interesting. Um, okay. We move on to Coronation Stakes and a race that I'm happy to say I got terribly wrong. Um, I did think that if, they, if money came for Inspiral, and it did on the exchange, it's quite strong on the exchanges from a very weak three to one in the morning. Um, so obviously they thought that there was there was there was the engine there. Um, but um, but just just to surmise that the, the, the Coronation, there's there's only four fillies in this that aren't shit, John. 
Because there's only four that's really should beat it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you've that much hope for them in behind. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's mine and John's summary at Coronation because we, we called it on the pod. Uh, Quentin, your thoughts on Coronation? Pretty much the same, to be honest. Everyone said, well, everyone on the bar steward said Cache was the, the, the 1000 was shit. It got beat in France. What was what was the form? She Discoveries has improved her. Uh, to, to come third in spirals just in a different league to them there's not really much to take you've got tenebrism who is a suspect stayer to be honest at a mile does homeless songs give her a race i mean mm. just as well i'll tell you really i mean why don't we all just play slayer cat shit for a couple of bags of paper <laughs> Or she with it, with it, with it. This is it. I mean, we're idiots. Aren't, well, I'm not calling Quentin an idiot because <laughs> I feel free. We were absolutely convinced she was shit, and we, we did. She, she yeah. joined up six to one in a fucking group one. Yeah, and we we sat there rubbing it while, while this is going on, and really, yeah. we, we should have took a couple. I think some of my decision making this week's been, but yeah, you, you're probably right. Why are we taking decisions like maybe a person in match bets or potential uh, you know, place bets? She's, what, in, what a, she's in a good one, and we think she's shit, and she's six to one. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're I, shooting, really. Yeah, we're idiots. <laughs> we're idiots. It was a losing race for me because I'm just again I'm trying to be greedy. I back the second, Spenderella. I back the American challenge, Spenderella and Pizza Bianca. And my main play was shit, uh, Grand Dam, uh, Jamie Spencer. I, I had small hopes about three out. I'm thinking, this is half a chance. It moved in front of in spiral. I'm thinking, well, if you continue this run, um, we've, we've got a huge shout. And then it was like one of them really cheap batteries you buy from, you know, like, like Happy Shopper batteries. You know, and you stick it in instead of Duracell, and you know you, you you're playing I don't know like orchestral maneuvers in the dark, and by the time you get to Duran Duran, batteries run out. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was it. That that was that was grand dam. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I felt like there. Okay, in, question. Yeah, homeless songs in spiral. Interesting clash that would be. What, what we say in there, chaps. On, on that showing in spiral, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah, I, 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 on I think, that showing in spiral. Yeah, I do as well. I've got that feel. I've got, I've got that feeling as well. If I, I know they backed her on the on the machines being quite strong, like for, for the late money, and she she was like three point two on Betfair on three point one ish. But don't forget, she was a week three perk this morning and drifted and kept drifting all week. I just wonder if if they sort of half knew, but they weren't totally sure whether they got her absolutely cherry ripe for this. Um, you know, who knows? That's mm. my gut feeling guesswork. But in Spiral might come on a lot for that, and then we end up having a superstar, Philly Smiler. Uh, blogger will get excited at that. Um, we go to the 5 o'clock, the Sandringham. Um, pretty, I, I, not a surprising winner, really, in Heredia. Very unlucky at York, if you look last time. But when, when you're getting short prices like that in big field handicaps you're always looking for something 21 as well yeah but i mean that's the thing though i'm I'm just wondering here that that draw flipped that race didn't it well this is it this is coming on to the uh, we've nearly finished uh, the preview i i i I think the high draws for tomorrow i do fresh ground fresh ground the clark's been saying he's faster there but you know and and the jockeys have kept avoiding it for whatever reason but I've just got this feeling tomorrow it, it'll all be it'll be big stand rail switch uh, tomorrow. So be interested if that does happen. I back persisting that Quentin uh, like fresh hope and uh, the Charlie Hills uh, uh, Philly Tamarama. So I H where one can on persist six places finishes seventh beaten by that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, John, you are John. You are sounding like golf club. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> got golf club for a funny tweet up today. Follow him on Twitter. He's a good laugh. That's the, the golf club 2019. He said today, 25 races in, no winners. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had some no bet races. Yeah, it's um, no. The golf club's 
at it full and hard this meeting. Um, anyway, 5.35, Ki- uh, King Ted. Um, I, I Again, uh, t- terrible luck for me with Grand Alliance, but then I, I always know there's a bit of that in him. Um, any, any views on this race? Good ride by Moore from the front, to be honest. Yeah. Um, just got them at it. 110, I think he's run to about 106. Mm. Um, but in pro show from Grand Alliance, you know, if they were getting straightened out, he could be 110, us, couldn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, it's like I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I believe in Charlie Fellows that much to do that. Um, because if, if you when he won at Doncaster, he veered across the track at yeah. Epsom, he, he looked, at Epsom, he looked tricky. Uh, it was in the, in the list in the trial race when he was second to Nahan, he should have won. Um, and then, and yeah, we still got an Anley. You couldn't get the house bricks out. Sorry, say that again, John. You still got an on at the minute. He couldn't get the house bricks out, out and mm. uh, perform a home, home visit gelding operation. Yeah, well, you, or, or get jockey to wear some spurs. Can you? No, you can't say that these days. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, can you? No, terrible that. We have to say pro, pro kush now. Pro Kush, <laughs> like John says, right? J- John said on Twitter, perfect point this, and he said, and he said, he said, he said, oh, you know, you give, he's got banned two whip, uh, two days for for use, excessive use of the Pro Kush that doesn't hurt, but still ban him anyway. <laughs> Everybody will tell you it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt, and doesn't hurt. So why can't you whack him thirty five times? It doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Sod it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. The question, I think. Fair point. Fair point, John. Um, so, yeah, a very, would we agree, chaps? Very substandard King Edward. Yeah, I don't believe the time form provisional have given the winner in the second 116. I don't believe that in a month for some days. Oh, jeez. Oh, Christ. Oh, that's, that's pushing that, I think. Um, that's yes. really... Ooh, that's that's ten pounds above me. Yeah, that's that's advertising a a, a boneless banquet and at KFC, and you end up with like a you know a drumstick. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Um, Six ten Ascot, the Holyrood House, the fit, the great betting event. This was that says no one. Um, uh, Latin lover ended up winning for Haley. Uh, for John's biennial winner, so Haley, it's looking good for you, John, with Haley right, Haley in form now. <laughs> yeah, um, she's had her winner, so we can forget Papa Cocktail tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Quentin, Quentin, this is this is what I think is interesting for Billy Bunters now. Overnight, we're, we're steering them here on the bar stewards, working them tomorrow. Uh, and you look at the draws, a Latin lover 11, second 21, third 26, fourth 28, fifth 31, sixth 22. Working and pointers here. I think they, I think they play high. Like, it's the first time I, I backed uh, what, the fifth or manner can win only, naturally. Um, it's the first time near the Stanside Rail's been explored all week, and you had Bon Sherman rattling home that way. Manor can held up, um, well, held up, Strong set a strong pace and and was on that part of the track. I think you're right with the high draws tomorrow. I think it's uncharted territory all week. That's I think that's going to be the place to be. Yeah. A, word, a word of caution: I have back some again. That was John Hay. Well, I I think that's a big chance, John. Uh, but we'll come on to that in a bit because you know we'll, we'll do it bets. Um, but everyone, you're in good company, here, listeners, because uh, Coogs Racing Club. I was talking to him this afternoon, and and he's as sick as us, really. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 he dutched the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He, he, he backed the high numbers, basically. He absolutely staked his book on the, on the high draws, like real, you know, cro- you know crossing bets and, and stuff like that. And uh, so second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, he had in that. Um, you get beat by Hayley Turner. Fuck yes, and, 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 and <laughs> comes in with, with you know with the you know should be beaming for Layla. Um just to wind John up. They'll have her on the, the opening show tomorrow or something just to get him going again. Um <laughs> right. Um okay, we've done the review. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh plenty of fun. Please watch the chair guy on Twitter if you go on to our timeline. Very funny interview. 
uh, one of the best of the year, and the style that probably me and John would reply to Luke Carvey as well. Um, okay, we're going to come on to best bets part of the show. This is where we give you our absolute rubbish uh, for tomorrow, and hopefully we can turn a profit and uh, better our performance at the Royal Meeting this week. Um, okay, chaps. Um, we don't. The rules are on this show, though. We don't have to go Royal Bets. We can go where we like, because this is what we do, where we like. So, chaps, I'm going to start with you, Quentin, for your third best bet of the week. Okay, I'm going to stick with Ascot, see if we can sustain the pain. Um, I'm going Chesham. I'm keen oh. to oppose the jolly. Alfred Munnings, dogs were barking on debut, sent off 8-11. to 11. Strode away with him, but I just think he's a, a shade short um, in what looks an okay race. Um, like from a physical standpoint, I quite like a few of them. Uh, the main one being the Foxes. Um, really liked him on debut in the paddock. Big, tall, scopy, scopy type even. Um, green and cultish and just just shaped that way, to be honest. He travelled well, blew up close home. Um, and, and the race is a bit of, bit of substance to it with a... I think there's a couple of winners that have come out of it since. Is Sire Churchill's yet to sire um, a winner this side of the water? First first time out, so I'm expecting a fair bit of improvement. He's re- related to Bangkok and Yazi. Um, I can see him taking a fair step forward. I think 16 to 1 is a shade overpriced. Mm, yeah, um, 16 to 1 with a magic sign. It isn't magic anymore, though. Um, but <laughs> it's it's a broken sign. It's one of them. It's one of them signs hanging off of the off of the off of the wall, isn't it? You know, <laughs> just hanging yeah, halfway yeah. down. Yeah, tired sign. <laughs> the tired <laughs> sign. So sixteen to one for Quentin. The tired sign on the foxes for his one point win bet. Um, good luck with that, Quentin. Um, do you think? Oh, by the way, do you think that'll reverse the form with Dark Thirty then? The Hannon horse. Yeah, yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. And good, that's good hopefully stuff. I can get some match bets rolling with. Him, him, well, a one v two. Um, that'll that'll make me make me a bit happier. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good point for punters there. Um, John, coming to you for your third best. Uh, this is in the four thirty two at HQ. Um, this is a horse called Alteza. You know, the fair bit I rating on this. Uh, this rating he runs off a couple of years back. Clearly, had his year was last year. He only got to the track twice. But he's been brought along steadily this year, and his last run indicated to me he's, he just looks as though he's coming to his physical peak now. Red Dawson gets on well with him. I, th- I think this is a race lacking a bit of depth, and I'll go one point win on him. One point win. So, so what? So what was what? What sort? What sort of like impressed you behind Cruyff Turn? Did you think? I'm just getting the impression the horse. He, he, at the start of the season, he'd he left plenty to work on. He's he, he looked in, as though he's improved the twice that he's run this year. Um, yeah. Physically, he's coming along and he maybe won it the heights that he, that he did it two years ago. But I, I, I think he's going to have a couple of pounding under his mark. And I, I think this is a fairly weak race. And uh, I, th- I think the price is okay ish. Yeah, quite a nice form. Like you said, La Trinidad, bless him. They they were, yeah. they caught the eye that very much that race coming from off at pace. Mm-hmm. You know, Tars are one of them. Um, yeah, good, 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 good shout indeed, John. So, are you what are you, are you anchoring? What are you doing? No, one point win. One point win, twelve to one. Paddy Power bet fair uh, for John. Uh, obviously trained by um, uh, Superman and ridden by uh, Ray Dawson. So, uh, my uh, third best bet uh, goes in the Workingham. Um, and um, I'm going to, I know I'm going to clash with John here, but I, I like to do this because I think John, John's, I know what John's, John fancies in the Workingham. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go two pronged. We, we as bar stewards think high draws is the place to be. The gambling fresh at the moment into seven to one, that's drawn seven, a bad bet. Um, I, I genuinely feel high draws tomorrow, and I'm very, very keen uh, on the Kevin Ryan train Bielsa. Uh, trap 38, 25 to 1. Um, absolutely huge price. Um, uh, CJ should be wet with this one. Uh, bent Jim on board um, for this. And I do feel with that with that stall 30 draw, 
that will bag the stand side rail. That will bag the stand side rail. Um, the last run against Dakota Gold was very, very eye-catching in the same race as Summergan. Summergan just finished in front of Bielsa, but Bielsa was towards far more towards that stand side rail, which I don't like at York. And 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 was also like sort of just just finishing its race off quite nicely. Dropped two pound for that, down to a hundred. You know, his last win was obviously the Air Gold Cup off ninety eight when he when he came down the stands rail. Could we see a similar scenario tomorrow, folks? Twenty fives, Bielsa. Uh, Leeds fans will certainly be on that one, uh, and that's my one point win, uh, third best bet. John, coming to you for your second best. Well, this actually was going to be some again, but I've had a bit of a racing, and I, I thought, well, now I was going to mention some again in the preview anyway, because I have backed it. Yeah. I don't think it will go really well in the world, you know. But as a yard bet to <laughs> advise, um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going with Brunello Breeze in the 745 at Haydock. Now, long-time listeners will cast their minds back to the maiden that gave us Ha Long Bay, one of our first other horses uh, this, that ran at Renker in the maiden. This was also in that maiden. Um, and then had a total float up after that. He's, he's, he's come out and nearly won the seasonal debut. Um, I thought he looked in need of the run. I think this will bring him on appreciably. And I, I think this is a tidy race for him now. Tom Tate's not really one of my go to trainers, but I think uh, all, all things being equal, it'll be hard pressed to cut this up, to be honest. Um, so I, I really fancy this anyway, Brunello Breeze. Okay, just one question for you. Um, obviously, so you're going with Brunello Breeze. I, I like your reasoning. So it's 12 to 1 available. Yeah. Obviously, on the you're going to go on the nose, aren't you? Two points. Yeah. Um, but Bastille's in there. 40s for Tim. I know you like Bastille. I know Bastille must be sl- Is it still on your radar, Bastille? Yeah, I think Tim has lost his way with him a bit, to be honest. Okay. Um, the last run started sitting me off, really. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. Right, just in, uh, so Brunello Breeze for John. Um, yeah, I don't think this is well in, you know. Yeah, 12 to 1. Good stuff, two points win on the nose for John. Uh, my two-pointer uh, goes in the Chesham against... Qu- I'm clashing with everybody today, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> well, not, not with John, because he's not tipping some again. I thought he might do. Because I know I know he liked it, but anyway, so I'm clashing clashing with Quentin. Um, I'm with um, Al Zahir for my two point win bet. Um, I like the fact that it was the the reach for the moon uh, maiden race last year where they started this off. The same as Godolphin started two of theirs off. Mm, um, print. Yeah, and 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 I'm I'm just I'm just going. On that fact that it, it, Alzheimer was well backed, um, the second thing was it it, it it was an absolute crawl, you know, which could it's not going to suit a see the stars sing spiel mare. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just not, is it? I mean, you just look at the pedigree, sing the stars, sing, sing, sing spiel mare, and it dipped under eleven seconds for the. I think that was a two to the one pole. I think it was the two to the one pole. It dipped under eleven seconds. And so that's a sign of quality because it gave naval power a little bit of ground and nearly beat it. Um, and it was very keen as well in the race was Alza here. So I would think uh, if as long as the sar- sardine, the sardine owes me a favour. He's been terrible to me this week. The sardine owes me a favour. And if, if he can do that, if he can settle Alza here, then I'd be I'd be very confident of, of a big run. The, the favourite is very, very short. He's very visually impressive. Um uh, was was Aidan O'Brien's favourite, uh, the Munning, Munnings one. But but it's beat nothing. The time was nothing. Um, so you, you just begin to wonder if if that's all that. It just it, it might not be as good as it looks. So I went for a bit of value. Uh, so that's two points win. Al's are here for me at um, 17 to 2. Quentin. 
Uh, my second best bet comes in uh, 16-0 at red car, uh, five furlong sprint handicap for three-year-olds. And I'm going to put the two points win on maybe even never. Uh, the caught the eye first start of the season at York. Uh, Nigel Tinkler never, never has them ready first up. He's gone off 40 to one over under fame at Manaman. Split Corker, who I didn't see where he finished in the Hollywood. Um, but Showtime Mahomes, who was back in second, who came out and won that Sunday series. Um, then subsequently gone to the Sunday series a few days later. And to my eye, he's just bounced. Six furlongs didn't suit. But you just look at the form of that. The second's one since. The third's one since. The fifth's one since. The ninth's one since. 14th, 21st. It, it's just strong, strong form. Um He's back at five furlongs tomorrow. I think that will suit. Drawn in a which would normally be a nagging doubt for me, but they didn't seem to be playing far side at red car today. And I just look at the race and think it's it's not deep. You've got guest list there that's blown out twice um, when she's been on, on top of the ground. Her wind's come on soft ground. Silky Wilkie, I don't really trust the Haydock form. It's kind of stand side on its own, can be slow away. Boson's improvement has come on the all weather and at six furlongs he was suited by strong pace at six i think they'll be going too fast from here i think it's 13 to two or oh, eight to one in a place maybe even never uh that's grossly overpriced mm, interesting eight to one with the denise kurtz quentin yep does that does that satisfy you oh yeah more than satisfies oh. me <laughs> like like it does john <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And John's got visions for her and Liz, Liz Truss. Um, <laughs> imagine that, John. You know, family bucket list. Curtis and Truss. Anyway, right. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe even never. Yeah, like Quint, 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 second to Corker um, on reappearance as as a long shot. It, it is very good form indeed. Now, now to the Lurkel, um, to 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 the John Ling uh, race course. Um, maybe even never could do it. Hopefully for Quentin. So good stuff. Okay, chaps. I'll kick us off then with the um, three pointers. Gonna go to the the Golden Gates. <laughs> <laughs> So you will bet that's your bag, you'll bet your bag that between the tablets, the shotgun, and the wanky. <laughs> that, that's that's when that's when you have six six cup of fen, a liter of gin by ten a.m., and then another six cup of fen, and then another liter of gin before the golden gates at five thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, and strangely, the horse is called Miss the Cut. <laughs> When the fun stops, stop. Yeah, that, that's that's me. Um, what, all I can say is for this is just wow. Um, I mean, I'm a bit, I'm a bit perplexed at the price. Really, I, I can, I get the price. Uh, Eleven to four is acceptable, but I'm just wondering for punters if they wait on for the machine, you know, because just if it goes to six point eight, like don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, but but it, but, it, but if, if you get some you know just a bit of seven or two or something on Betfair, let's say, but miss the cut for me is an absolute. I, I think this Ed Babington who owns it. I mean, he must. I mean, he he beat Al Barhi by eleven lengths of Kevin Frost. Um, that's that's proved itself to be definitely eighty, definitely eighty. Um, he's beat it by eleven. And then under a penalty, then 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 absolutely dishes out the mega thrashing to Naval College of Stouts. Um, that finished second to Baltic Bird at Yarmouth. And the third horse, Balambar, was one of Quentin's sort of eye catchers this week um, in the um, in the King George uh, handicap um, when it was he could never get in the race off a slow pace, but caught the eye making late ground off eighty five. Well, come on, chaps. I know this is 95, but this horse is a machine. Um, physically, it looks the part. Um, I, I, I expect this horse to be state class. I'm pretty certain it is. I, I, I know it's a good race, but it's the only one I want to back. And I do like Honiton. I've always been a fan of Honiton um, in terms of improvement. And, you know, a good galloping 10 furlongs will suit, but... I just think this horse has got more gears. I think I think this this you could put this anywhere in the race. It just it's, if anyone watches the last run at um, at Salisbury, 
Oh, it was so impressive. Um, deadly, just visually. Deadly. Yeah. So oh, yeah. missed the cut. Um, because because basically I need a winner and and yeah that that's that's where the max is. Put it this way. This is this is the one tomorrow. You're doing your brains. Get, be, gamble away. You know when the fun stops, stop. <laughs> Keep lumping on. Um, <laughs> Oh, we're going to get shut down. Um, okay, so that's my three points. Uh, missed the cut, 11 to 4. Uh, <laughs> Quentin, coming to you for your uh, toi. Uh, point. My three pointer comes in same race as John's, 1945 ADOC. Um, I'm going to play, what's it called? Super Lover. Um, I really like the horse as a two year old fool. He's going to be a lot better of a three year old. He, he shaped well first time out at Windsor, handicapping ride, um, too far back, sharp track, etc. etc. You know the deal. And then you're strong in the market, sand down, ended up being hampered out the stalls, three to four deep round the bend on a on a day where I don't know why it wasn't a bad place to be, but it was too deep. Travelled up into the straight, kept on going well enough, but just found like the extra ground covered. Um, a bit too much at the end of the race. Form looks solid, not spectacular, but I don't like the race at all. You've got Ammon Zoe, who's undoubtedly well handicapped, but she had everything go away at Leicester. They went hell for leather up top and the race kind of fell apart. I think she needs 10 and a seven, seven runner field round here. They're, they're not going to go too quick. Mount Batten, second favourite in that Weatherby race, doesn't want to win the Farhe thing. Quick change looks overrated. Sunset and Vines, another one that doesn't want to win. Uh, Brunello Breeze, a horse I've got notes on. I backed it last time out. And as John said, it had shaped well at Red Car when on the wrong part of the track. He's be semi interesting, but three to one, five to two generally on Super Lovers. Uh, overpriced. He goes off sub seven or four easily. Good stuff. So it could be a reverse forecast there, chaps. Um, Super Lover, three to one for Quentin for his max. Um, going against John with Brunello Breeze, uh, but we don't mind clashes because you know punters can take the take the what the opinions and, and do what 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 they please. Um, but uh, it could be a forecast, bastards forecast. Thanks, Quentin, uh, and good luck at John. Coming to you for your humdinger. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually picked one that the ladies on that, and um, this is in the till thirty, the Chesham. <laughs> we've got we've got a, we've got a three way here. We've got a three way um, three ball. The horse, like Rod question, the horse in question is the foxes. Oh! Yeah, we um, <laughs> this really took my eye down at the start at Gilbury on W. Um, You're a pair of fuckers. Well, <laughs> um, I, I thought it looked a lovely Scorpios and. Uh, I was, I was a bit windy about the trip, to be honest, because I, I think I might have even chanced a few quid on him. But I, I looked at the pedigree, I thought, something six foot long, that way. But then I was really impressed with how he travelled up. Um, and for me, it was just an experience that caught him out, and possibly lack of hard fitness. Now, he went in the note boat with a view to having the fucking works on him. In a maiden at the July meeting at about five to two, eleven to four. But Mr. Baldwin, in his wisdom, has gone here instead. I, I, I literally can't let him go on that. Um, mm. I, I have a healthy respect for the Towser and Slim horse, which I thought very much you, you made the perfect case for Ali. Um, but I did like this one very, very much on debut. I'm going to go one, one and a half points each way, wanker. One and a half points. Just let's let's check the terms. We need to check the terms here uh, for, for for the wankering. Um, Oz checkers just absolutely just fucked me there. As I was just yeah, just just getting to, just getting to the point of each way terms. Shall we give him four with the, with Denise? Um, D- Denise would give me four because I'd give her one. I, I, well, I tell you what. Do you, right, you can have Quentin, Quentin's nicked the sixteens on the nose. Do you want the fourteens with the four? Yeah, the fourteens with four. Yeah, fourteens with the four. That's bet three six five. Um, yeah, that with with, with Kurtz. Yeah, 
John's had it. John's had her again. Um, so that's four teams, four places for one and a half each way. You might want to consider some, some forecasts. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing. I think we're all against the Fav, which is a, a, a bar stewards thing where the Fav usually ends up winning. Impressively, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you, yeah. You every, tomorrow night, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're there anyway. We've 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 summed that up, lovely. Um, so so three of us in the Chesham. We've got a few clashes and some great opinion there, folks. So again, listeners, pick your selections uh, wisely. You know, you'll have some thoughts of your own, and it might whatever any one of us has said might back up your own thoughts as well. Reverse forecast double. Get out the shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's two ways of playing us this week. You can either say, well, you know, it's like back in back in Reds, and it's been 14 blacks in a row. So would you a red? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or you might think, no, they're shit. So I'm I'm pressing the pink button. But that's the big thing. We're worse than catch it at the minute, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> we finished behind catch it this week. We have. We, we, Judge we, Bowie wouldn't swap, would he? No, no, we've done it in. No, not for us. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Right. Uh, on to any other business um, uh, to Saturday. We'll keep it at Ascot because I know. You've probably got some other things at other other places, but generally, I think punters are all tuned into Ascot. Any other thoughts, Quentin? I'll come to you first on the Ascot card. Anything that sort of like took your eye, or you're looking in match bets? Anything that sort of like you know? Let's have a look. Golden Gate. I like the Bowie pair. I've been clicking away trying to get some bits of free free to one plus on Mister Cut. You, you summed up the case perfectly. Strong on the clock. I thought he'll get a mark in the low to mid nineties. It's clearly clearly improving at a rate of knots. Um, I didn't think it was that deep a race, to be honest. I don't think there's that many with no well amount of class. Yeah. 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 The, the one that the other Bowie horse, I don't mind. I think he's approaching forty on the machine. Tollard Royal. He obviously comes from the Silver Bowl. Um, in that race, he's just got hampered a couple of times in the in, in the straight, but towards the end he was he was plugging along well enough and I think ten furlongs will suit the, the dam got twelve on, on soft ground, so I think stamina's gonna gonna be his, his strong point. I wouldn't put anyone off that at a large price. Um but yeah, Mr. Cut as well. Yeah. Because of any other any other races or any anything that's sort of early catching your eye in terms of, you know, doing any business. Preview show, we said oppose Hurricane Lane. I've got no, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I'm still in a lay camp with Hurricane Lane. You watch his replays back on decent ground. He just hangs a bit and uh, there's absolutely no chance he's cherry ripe from this. They're working back from the arc. There's enough depth in the race. I know Mustafa Darf, or, or yeah, we'll go with that, um, is, is stepping up. But I think there's enough depth to lay him at sub, sub 1.9 if you can get him in the book at that price. I think it's more than fair. Yeah. Um, what is the fifteen oh five? Uh, the jersey. I don't like Noble Truth. Had the was on the right part of the track at HQ. He's had the knackers off, which will likely help. But he seems to have a screw loose. Tommy Sun, uh, the French Raider. I thought that did work very well under coming from further back. An ideal to win. Beat the German one thousand guineas winner. That's twenty to one plus and worth a few quid. What did you think to Dracula's in that Star Girls Almal? Ground doubt for me. Did shape well in the Irish 1000, but just it's, I think this will be too fast. Family seem to need it easy on the foot, and I just think this is genuine fast ground tomorrow. Might catch her out. Did Did you get but, an angle on the 420, the Home Affairs that beat um, uh, Nature Strip? What any view on that horse? Or? Absolutely no, nothing at all. Didn't want to lay the favourite, didn't want to back the favourite, set out the race. Yeah, just one thing, uh, just what I'd like to point out, um, it, I suppose it was was, was February, uh, Home Affairs was getting the weight for age with Nature Strip, uh, obviously no weight for age um, uh, here. Um, so I, I just wondered, would that play a part, do you think, or would that not 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 play much part at all? Yeah, I... Don't think it would, to be honest. Like no. horses, horses mature, don't they? That's that's the reason the wait for ages in place. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair, fair enough. So, so that's Quentin's thoughts. John, coming to you. Any, any, any sort of other thoughts on the races where you you're thinking about it, but not, but not sure, or anything that you're going to do, and you haven't told us already. Um, I think I might have a bit unsacred in the Platinum Jubilee. 
Right, the, the, the shirt. Yeah, it goes well fresh. I mean, the best traditions of us best, you would think in the Nell Gwyn's always shit. <laughs> She's a former Nell Gwyn winner. Then, then she won the, that good race at Newbury, didn't she, breaking the cash? Yes. I think she's interesting, dropping in trip and strongly run six. Yeah. And it's from beach. on quick ground. Mm. She could travel into this quite nice. Um, the draw's sort of iffy now, isn't it? But Highfield Princess, it looks certain to blast like she did at York. She's yeah. in five. So I tend to think the pace will be middle to bow. Um, and, and give her a toe into the race. I think she's just a tad overpriced. At, uh, I think she's twelve to one best price. Um, I have about I have her about third, third best in of our our losses. So yeah. the shirt's only running one on Saturday, so he's got to, he's got to get dressed up top hat and tails uh, for just the one. He might not go. He might maybe just the last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. To be fair, he's worn he's worn some stunning jackets this week as the shirt. Uh wins best dress for me if I was ITV paddock pundit. Uh, uh sorry, fashion pundit. He he wore a beautiful yellow on one day, lovely sky blue another. He's got dress sense, this fella. We saw that in the derby last year. Hence for any new listeners, he's called the shirt. Right. My Anything else, John, before I finish? Before... No, just, as I say, some again in the work, you know. Yeah. What I would say is, uh, I just, I'd just reiterate to punters uh, tomorrow, I think we're all unanimous off air and on air that we feel the high numbers on the straight course, uh, for, particularly for the working, and that's the race to concentrate on. Um, if we're wrong, we're absolutely terribly wrong, and we apologise. But... I genuinely believe it'll it'll play out that the, the towards the stand side will be victorious in the Workingham, and that's where you should possibly lay out some trifectas and all sorts with the high draw numbers, uh, especially when you've got like horses like Fresh, Quarantine Dreams. They're seven and two, and they're filling the first uh, two of the first three in the market. So. That's all from us um, this evening. We're back on Sunday. No show tomorrow. Uh, we will cover off the Saturday meeting in the first part of the sermon on Sunday with me, John, and Chris. And I, I would like to thank Quentin in particular for this week for putting up with me and John all week because, you know, we it's, it's like Brothers Grimm. <laughs> <laughs> it's been you know. a pleasure. An absolute yeah, pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. John. I, Absolutely appreciate it, Quentin. Appreciate your work and efforts, and uh, hopefully we'll finish off the week in style. Uh, That's all from us. Bye for now.